Now we're going to turn to understanding something about this context of how we're delivering performance in organizations. And to do this, we're going to talk about two things. In this first video, we're going to talk about how we can understand quality in terms of the outcomes of a process. In the second video, we'll talk about quality in terms of the process itself. Now, in the beginning, what we see is that the process for managing quality is going to go through a series of stages. And what we deliver out of each of those stages is a particular content, the product, if you will. So a product is being operated on by a process. We begin with customer requirements, and we end on deliverables presented to customers in satisfaction of those requirements. There are two theories that underlie how we think about this process. The first was developed by Dr. Noriaki Kano in Japan. It's called the theory of attractive quality. And what Dr. Kano talks about there is a model where there's a vertical axis on the degree of satisfaction delivered to customer, and the horizontal or x-axis is about how well we do the work. And Dr. Kano had the idea that there's three different functions. Now, there's two words in Japanese for quality. One is talking about something that is fit for love. He called this attractive quality. This is when the guy sees the girl, and he looks at her, and he says, wow. And he knows that he is smitten for life and has to marry this woman. Love at first sight. Attractive quality. We see that sometimes in the Apple iPhone. Dr. Uh, Stephen Job said, make the iPhone so people want to eat the buttons. Okay, And so you start saying, wow, this is such a great experience. I have to have this. And so people then become stuck into the Macintosh or the Apple, if you will, ecology. And so they have to have the iPad, they have to have the, the power book and so forth, because they feel this attraction to that. On the other side, there's another word in Japan where they're talking about basic characteristics of things that must be. And Dr. Kano called this must be quality. And must be quality is something that if it's not there, you don't even think that the things are delivering performance in any way. You consider it almost garbage. And as a result, if we don't meet must-be quality, people are always dissatisfied. They never actually create true satisfaction, but they can be dissatisfiers. So Kano's theory is built on Hertzberg's principles of hygiene, these must-be quality things, and motivators, the attractive quality. And in between, Kano recognized that businesses compete on how they deliver value. And so he had a middle component where he talks about one-dimensional quality, where we make a comparison between two choices, and we say which one was performing better and which one has the better value. That's the fundamental of the quality theory of Dr. Kano. But he also noticed something else. It's only in this one-dimensional spread that we actually talk about what is spoken quality. In other words, I can write a specification. I can tell you what I want. If I'm going to go buy a car, I can tell you the size of the engine, the performance I'd like to have, the stereo system, maybe the color. But then there are unspoken things. I don't put on that list, I want the car to start, stop, and steer. Cars do that. But I also don't think about some of the things that could be designed into the car by an engineer. And so the engineer's ideas that are innovative, creative, can actually create a new sense of longing for one particular car over another. And I say, I just have to have it because it's this ecological car. Maybe it's hands-off driving, and I really want to have that because I want to read or I want to be surfing on my iPad while I'm going to work or going to school. Now what happens is there's a dynamic in this model. All of those attractive features, those creative ideas, competition won't just let a company get away with it. No, they say, we have to take that idea and then convert it into our product or our services because we don't want to be left behind. So attractive quality actually suffers from gravity. It will have a, a transition down to one-dimensional quality where everybody's doing the same sort of thing. And then one-dimensional quality, when it is so basic and fundamental, everybody wants to have it, then it's must-be quality. And all it can do is dissatisfy. So as we look at this, this is the law of entropy applying to competitive forces in the marketplace. If we take a look at business, what we see is there's basically three different strategies. If I'm going to focus always on attractive quality, I have a requirement for feature uniqueness. 
That means I'm going to focus on leadership, developing engineering approaches towards new products. If I'm going to focus on this one-dimensional quality, I have to have good feature differentiation so customers can cl clearly see the value proposition and why my product is better than the competitors. And if I'm going to focus on this must-be quality, what I have to have is I have to have flawlessness in the features because the only way I can deliver the lowest total cost product is if I have operations excellence and my products are not costing or losing anything in the marketplace. So if we take a look at those, we see compliance quality is what's happening with must be. I'm meeting the standard, but I'm not doing anything better. Improvement quality is where I have to be better than the competition. And excellence in quality is where I'm doing something that is so beyond everybody else that it's perceived as a grade above what's there. So commodity quality exists in many different types of things that we see in life, in gasoline, in many food supplies, and so forth. Competitive quality is where we go to the store and we see different products and we choose. Differentiated quality is where companies can really win in the marketplace because there are no competitors out there. So that leads companies to having different strategies. If I'm looking at this must be quality, I have to develop competence in my people, capabilities in my processes. I have to have what we would call Six Sigma performance. There can be very few mistakes in the process. With the middle quality, this one, this one dimensional quality, I have to have better customer insight than the competitors so I know what I'm doing. And if I'm going to be going for this attractive quality, then I have to stimulate innovation and not just leave it to chance, but actually engineer innovation into products. And so this is the Kano model. This is talking about the qualities of delivery of products and our services. So this is one dimension, and we'll come back and take a look at the other dimension, which is relative to the process of our quality in our next video.